Nobody knew about this saw. Not me, maybe not you. A lot of people. I had no idea this existed until I was browsing around the internet and found it. And so I had to try it out. We're gonna put this through the paces. I'll let you know what you get and if this is worth the price to be a good budget track saw for you. Important to note, I bought this with my own money. I'm not sponsored by anybody. These are my thoughts. In this review, I'm gonna tell you what I like, what I really like, what I don't like, and who I think this saw is made for. Let's go. If you'd like to check this out, I'll put a link in the description and the pinned comment so you can find it easier. Inside the box, you're gonna get the four amp hour power core battery. You're getting the charger, which has the power jump feature I'll talk about in a minute. Plus you're getting a dust adapter as well as the saw and a blade. You also get an instruction manual, which we all know men don't need. Always read the manufacturer's instructions. Just kidding. Everyone should read them, even men. You also get the satisfaction of peeling off the plastic from over the logo. Shiny. I will say first impressions, I like it. I like the look of it. The black, the red with the silver, it, it looks really good. It also feels good in the hand. It's not overly heavy. Nice grip to this saw, really nice grip. Has a rafter hook, should you need that. Now you can use this as a standard circular saw or on the track. And speaking of the tracks, let's take a look at those. As far as the tracks goes, you're getting two 27 and a half inch tracks that goes together, which is just like Rigid and Ryobi are doing with their saws. I think somebody else was doing it too. What that's for, I think personally is for packaging purposes. So you don't have a big long package to ship. I think it cuts down on the cost. These marry together with a single bar, which is different than most other track saws that use two bars. That was a little concerning to me at first that it wouldn't line up properly, but actually worked just fine. The only thing that gives me a little concern is when I was unboxing this, there were four loose bolts that go into the guide bar to line these up. They were just loose in there. I'm assuming they come loose from the bar during transport and they just spilled out. I almost lost one. It almost went under the toolbox and it would be gone forever. Uh, but there were also four more in the package with the Allen key and the two clamps that you get with this. So there are actually eight in the package. So if you did lose four, you would still have those four. It's a good touch, I think. Assembling the track is very easy. You just slip this bar in. You're gonna basically divide it up. You're gonna put two bolts on one side, two on the other, and you're just gonna snug those up. Don't over tighten these because this is aluminum. And I've noticed on other tracks, if you over tighten that bolt, it will start denting the other side. One important thing to note on this track, it's two-sided. In other words, the saw can go either direction. However, one side is longer or wider than the other. One side is about two and a half inches long to the outside edge of the splinter guard. And then the other side is just two inches, a half inch difference. But what that's for is the long side is for 90 degree cuts. The shorter side is for bevel cuts up to 45 degrees. As far as the clamps go, it comes with two clamps that will only fit this track. As far as I can tell, my Festo clamps wouldn't go in this track. A dovetail clamp wouldn't go in this track. So you will have to use their clamps should you decide to clamp it down. And another thing I noticed on this track versus what you would get with say the Rigid Track Saw, Festool, Milwaukee, there is no anti-skids on the bottom of this other than the splinter guard, which is slightly raised from the bottom of the track. So those may act as a anti-skid, we'll find out. This charger reminds me a lot of the Flex charger, especially the Flex Fast Charger. You can hear the fans rolling on it now. It's uh, fairly loud, but that's keeping that battery and the charger itself cool while it charges up. A lot of those fans you hear running are part of the skill power jump technology. What that means is from 0% in your battery, it'll charge at 25% in five minutes. It's a pretty good little feature to have if you just need to finish those cuts or finish driving those screws, things like that. I do like that. Overall, I like the fit and feel of this saw. I like how the angle adjustment works. It does have a kind of a unique feature. It has a stop at 45 degrees. That will flip out and let you go all the way to 56 degrees. I like the fact that they put markings on the front of the saw at 0 and 45. I'm assuming that shouldn't marry up to the track. We're going to test that out. Blade change super easy. It does have a arbor stop as well as built-in tool storage. The depth adjustment works very easy. Flip a switch, move it, push it back down. I like that. It works much like my rigid circular saw. The only thing I I'm not sure about on the back side is there are markings that tell you where three quarter inch plywood is, quarter inch, three, three times, three X, whatever that means. <laughs> but it doesn't really give me a clear indication of where I should put that mark. Should it be at the bottom of the shroud or should it be at that line that's on the shroud that's just black? I'm not sure. They could have at least painted the line if it was where it was supposed to be, but we'll figure that out in time. Now this isn't just a circular saw. This was absolutely built to be a track saw. And the reason I know that is it has the track saw adjustment knobs on the front and the back, as well as what I'm thinking is going to be an anti-tip or anti-kickback. So I got a piece of plywood, three quarter inch plywood here, 48 inches wide. We're gonna make a test cut. But the first thing I notice is 
it's gonna need to be clamped down because you can see this slips and slides a little bit and you don't want that on a track saw. Now that's one of the main differences in this track versus some of the other competitors out there. It doesn't have that anti-skid on the bottom. Before we do that cut, we need to cut the splinter guard. This is standard on all track saws. So we're gonna make that cut and get that ready to go. All right, so now I'm gonna cut this piece of plywood. First cut with this saw minus the splinter guard. It was sticking a little bit on the guide rail. So I went ahead and just put some outlaws board butter on there. If you have paste wax, you could do that. Any kind of waxy substance should help that glide a little smoother. It just felt like it was sticking a little too much. And if I loosened off of those tightening knobs, it just got a little too loose. So just be aware of that if you're in the market for this one. Let's talk about cut quality and power on this saw because that's why you're buying it. Let's be honest with each other. You're not buying it because it's black and red most of the time. Sometimes you might be. Anyway, this thing, it's nice. For cutting plywood, I don't think you'll have any issues at all with this. What I would recommend is upgrading this blade. This is a 24 tooth framing blade. It even says it right there. You're gonna wanna get a higher tooth count blade, 40 to 60 tooth, especially for plywood, maybe even a little higher depending on what you're cutting. That way you get zero frays. Although with this new blade, it did cut the plywood really well. Like I didn't see a whole lot of tear out. There's a little bit under the bottom side again, but I think that's from the framing blade. You'll wanna pick up another one. Dust collection on this is abysmal, which I knew it would be. It's got a giant open face here. This is not like a plunge track saw that has the covered shroud. Uh, just didn't. I even held my hose right there on the dust collector. It just, it's not meant for dust collection. So if dust collection is something that's important to you, this is not your saw. Next up, I cut this big old thick piece of walnut. This is almost two inches thick, just a little shy, about an inch and three quarter. It did really well. Now it's not at the power level of the DeWalt. It was the most powerful cordless track saw that I'd ever used. It's also not at the level of the Milwaukee or Festool or the Rigid. I think it's on par power wise with maybe between the Rigid and the Ryobi, somewhere in that middle ground there. Plenty of power, it powered right through it. I didn't feel it bogging too much. You do hear a little bog on the motor, but it did work well. And most importantly, it cut absolutely square, dead on all the way down the cut. That's what I was surprised by. I thought maybe it might deviate a little bit. None, it was perfectly square and that was impressive. Again, with the dust collection on the thicker cut, the same thing happened. You see a lot of dust flying. This is not the saw for if you're worried about dust collection at all. Now let's talk about what I like, what I don't like and who I think this is for. Now, what I like about it, the fast charger. I like that I was able to charge this to full power in about 20 minutes, maybe, maybe a little less actually, full four bars like that. I like that it has enough power to power through that a little less than two inch thick piece of walnut and it cut perfectly square. <laughs> it's awesome. I like the price point on this, 250-ish dollars for this combo kit, battery charger attracts plus the saw. I think that's a very good value for what you're getting. I also like the adjustments on the saw. It's easy to raise up and down. It's also easy to bevel. It's just a good overall well-made saw. This is also the base of this. Hello, anybody home? Nice and solid metal doesn't deflect or anything like that. So it's a really good saw if you're looking to make good square cuts. I do like that it had markings on there to tell me about how deep I am. I'm just kind of confused as to where exactly to put that. But I put the three quarter inch plywood line up there on the mark on the shroud. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera here, but that was the exact right spot for it. So the line is where it goes. I also like that this was made to be a track saw. It is a circular saw. You can use it off the track just like any other circular saw, but it is made to go on the track because of those knobs there, and it's easy to adjust to your track. Not only did this cut this perfectly square, it did a really good job as far as not burning the wood or anything like that. There are some very minor blade marks right here, but that's honestly, most all of your saws are gonna give you a little bit of that. It's not bad, it's not bad. Another thing I like is it has a built-in LED. I know a lot of newer tools have this, but not all of them do. And I do appreciate that they put that on. What I don't like, couple of things here. I don't really care for the track. It's the single rail that I don't care for. I think that's why I had a little bit of a trouble sliding and gliding on there. And I put that Outlaws board butter on there and it slid just fine. I wish that they had just went ahead and put two rails on there, much like every other track on the market. Track saws are running on two rails. That keeps everything nice and straight. I think we're getting a little bit of binding on this single track without any pace wax. I also don't like the lack of dust collection. This thing is awful. If they meant for this to be a track saw, which obviously they did, they should have built in a shroud here. That would have helped a lot. Dust collection's awful. Another thing I didn't care for is because this is a circular saw and not a plunge saw, before you can seat it on the track, you have to move the uh, blade guard away so that it sits down properly. And then the blade guard snaps into place where it's touching right there on the splinter guard. 
At times when you're moving this backwards, you'll see that it hangs up and kind of pushes you off the track. Short version, it might cause a kickback if you move it backwards, even accidentally uh, during the cut or while the blade is spinning. That's kind of a safety issue in my opinion. Now, some people won't like the fact that it comes with two 27 and a half inch tracks. I've seen those comments on the Rigid and the Ryobi track saw review that I did. This is made for someone who A, doesn't have a lot of space, two, the person who's breaking down plywood fairly regularly, and you still want that space savings. You don't want a giant track taking up a lot of space, and you can break this down pretty easily. And it gives you the 55 inches here, so you can able to make those four foot cuts cut across sheets of plywood. It's perfect for the garage shop woodworker. And three, somebody who is already in the skill line or don't have a battery platform yet, or just wants a good, affordable track saw, that could also double as a circular saw that you could use around your house. What I thought might be an anti-tip or anti-kickback was not that actually, it's that thumb screw right there. What that's for is a rip fence you can buy separately. It'll slip right through this groove here, you snug that up, and then you can make repeatable rip cuts of various thicknesses, widths, various widths. Overall, I'm kind of impressed with the Skill Cordless line. This is my first Skill Cordless tool. I have some more coming just to check, check them out. I've been hearing a lot of good stuff about the 20 volt power core from Skill. I think they're doing a good job. I think this is a viable option if you're in the market for affordable cordless power tools. I like the saw. I don't love it, but I do like it. And I think they've come a long way and done something that I haven't seen anybody else doing is basically making a circular saw on purpose, a track saw. So I like that fact that they tried that and I like this saw pretty good. And I think they did a pretty good job. It, there are improvements that should be made. Uh, maybe in the next version of this in a few years, whenever they come out with that. But so far, I think they did a pretty good job out of the gate. If you like this saw, kind of thinking about it, you gotta check out the rigid track saw review I did right there. Click in that box, get you the big old virtual fist bump. Or if you really wanna step up your game, check out the Milwaukee track saw review right there.